Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Natus where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our labs playlist. In previous videos, we talked about urine, uric acid, urine cortisol, urine ketone bodies, urine chloride, urine electrophoresis, and the Benz Jones proteins. Today, let's talk about urodynamic studies. One of them is called urine flow studies or urine flow rate or uroflometry. Euro means urine flow is the flow which is volume over time metry from meter to measure why do you want to measure the flow of my urine because it can help me diagnose many conditions including diseases of the detrusor muscle of the bladder problems with the urethra including obstruction please watch the videos in this playlist in order so what's the basic idea behind these urodynamic studies? We're trying to diagnose voiding abnormalities, such as problems in the bladder muscle, the trusor, or outflow obstruction. Maybe I have benign prosthetic hyperplasia, or maybe I have cancer of the cervix, or maybe there is a big stone stuck here. All of these conditions will inhibit the flow of urine, making it harder for me to urinate. We call this urinary incontinence. What's the procedure? ask the patient to empty his or her bladder into a flometer, which is a device that measures flow. What is flow? Change in volume over change in time. And you can plot a graph like this. In the beginning, as the patient starts to urinate, the flow rate is very slow. Then it speeds up very quickly, so the rate here is very high. Then there is plateau. Plateau does not mean that the patient is not urinating. Plateau means that there is no change in the velocity of the flow. The patient is still urinating at a constant rate. And after that, as the bladder shrinks in size, because most of the urine is now out, the flow rate will decrease. So let's talk about some diseases like urinary tension and urinary incontinence. Urinary tension is very common after surgery, by the way probably due to the anesthetic. Many of the general anesthetics are GABA agonists. They stimulate GABA. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter, so GABA inhibits everything, including the detrusor muscle activity. For example, this slide shows the expected postpartum changes. After labor and delivery, the puerperum, which is the lady around delivery, might complain of these conditions. After labor and delivery. And one of them is urinary tension, the other is stool retention. Again, after the anesthetic, everything is slow. My bladder is slow, I get urine retention. And my colon is slow, I get constipation. Here is a rough and dirty way to think of urinary bladder issues. Ask yourself, do you think the patient's bladder is too active or do you think it's too weak and too lazy? If the bladder is too active, we'll probably give a medication to decrease bladder contraction, tell the bladder to calm down a little. Conversely, if the bladder is too weak, we gotta give something to increase the strength of contractions. The detrusor muscle is supplied by many nerves. Some of them are sympathetic, other are parasympathetic. The parasympathetic is rest and digest and go to the bathroom. So the parasympathetic wants me to empty the bladder. So this M3 receptor, if it's stimulated by acetylcholine, will tell the bladder to empty. But if the bladder is too active, we gotta inhibit the M3, such as by oxybutynin, tolterodine, or solifanacin. Now let's go back to normal. What's the normal effect of the sympathetic nervous system on the detrusor muscle? Sympathetic is fight flight. If you are running from a tiger, do you want to urinate right now? Heck no, I have no time for this nonsense. So the sympathetic, by beta-3 stimulation, will relax the detrusor muscle and inhibit urination. But if my bladder is too active, what do you want to do? I want to make it passive, which means I want it to contract less, which means the sympathetic beta-3 is my friend right now. I want to give a drug that is beta-3 agonist, such as mirabigrone. Both the muscarinic M3 antagonists and the beta-3 agonists will relax the detrusor muscle and make my bladder less active, which is a good thing if I have increased bladder spasm or urge incontinence. Conversely, if my bladder is too weak, maybe because of morphine, the anesthetics, old age, etc., then what do you want to do? I want to boost the bladder contractility. How do you do that? First of all, make sure there is no stone or anatomical obstruction because if you give a medication to boost the detrusor muscle, 
when there is an obstruction, you can rupture the bladder, you freaking doofus. So first order of business, you make sure that there are no stones and no obstructions. No cervical cancer, no benign prosthetic hyperplasia, prostate cancer, etc. You should also do the same thing for the colon. Before you boost colonic motility, you should make sure there is no anatomical obstruction in the colon, otherwise you will rupture the colon. That's another doofus. And we have many of these in every hospital, trust me. After ruling out anatomical obstruction, now we are ready to boost the detrusor muscle contraction by giving bethanical. Bethanical is a muscarinic M3 agonist, which will boost detrusor contraction. Next, let's talk about the sphincters. Your external sphincter is voluntary under your voluntary control, under your volition. But the internal sphincter is involuntary, it's autonomic. Alpha-1 stimulation, this is part of the sympathetic nervous system, will close the sphincter and prevent the urine outflow. But what if I have benign prosthetic hyperplasia? Do you want to inhibit the outflow? No, the outflow is already struggling. Therefore, we give alpha-1 blockers for patients with benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Alpha-1 blockers include prazosin, terazosin, doxazosin, alfozosin, tamsulosin. And since the prostate gland is a male gland, it is dependent on male hormones, not testosterone per se, but the more potent dihydrotestosterone. How can I prevent the conversion of testosterone into dihydrotestosterone Inhibit the enzyme that converts testosterone to DHT. What's the name of that enzyme? 5 alpha reductase. So give the patient a 5 alpha reductase inhibitor, such as finasteride. This will decrease the prostate tissue volume. When you inhibit alpha 1, you are decreasing the dynamic bladder outlet obstruction. But when you decrease the size of the prostate, you're decreasing the static bladder outlet obstruction. The different types of urine incontinence was discussed in detail in my OBGYN high yields course and in my surgery high yields course. Today, I'll just review quick the topic of overflow incontinence. I hate this name. The old name was better. It was called retention overflow. This is better because it has retention. It tells you that the urine is not flowing. Urine keeps flowing from the ureter to the bladder, but then the bladder cannot contract. Hence, retention. And then when the bladder gets full, few drops will leave. That's the overflow. Like my cup is overflowing. Why is this happening? Maybe, maybe it's after anesthesia. Or morphine. Maybe I have benign prosthetic hyperplasia. Maybe I am diabetic and my nerves are not good. Or multiple sclerosis or spinal cord injury. So my bladder contraction is very weak. This patient might suffer from frequency urgency burning dysuria. The urine stream is hesitant, inconsistent, weak, and unpredictable. The amount of urine lost is very small. Only the extra drops after the bladder is full will leak out. My cup is overflowing. Only few drops are overflowing. This patient might leak some urine while sleeping. Since the bladder is full, if you touch the suprapubic area, it is very tender. When you do urodynamic studies, you'll find that the residual volume, i.e. the volume remaining in the bladder after you ask the patient to urinate, is higher than normal because the bladder cannot contract because my nerves are weak or because there is an obstruction, such as enlarged prostate gland. How can we manage these patients? Treat the underlying condition if you can, rule out anatomical obstruction like stones, and then to boost the bladder contraction, you give bethanicol, which is a muscarinic M3 receptor agonist. This was overflow incontinence or retention overflow. How about urge incontinence? Think of it as an infected bladder. Everything is hyper. This bladder is crazy. Urge, too active. So let's go to the urodynamic studies. Uroflometry. Here is normal. We talked about this. Outflow obstruction. Well, look at this. I have an obstruction here, maybe because I have cervical cancer or benign prosthetic hyperplasia or maybe there is some kind of stone here, or maybe I am born with urethral stricture, or maybe I had surgery before and after surgery fibrosis happens causing stricture of the urethra. All of these patients will present similarly, not identically, but similar to this graph. Here is the normal, as you see. Look what's going on. The flow rate is diminished. Okay, that makes sense. The rise is slower and the plateau takes longer and the plateau happens at a lower rate than the normal value. Which makes sense because the prostate is so big and it's obstructing the urethral outlet. 
Exactly. Everything is taking longer here. Now let's talk about a different thing, detrusor muscle dysfunction. Let's say it is hyperactive. Oh, right, look at this intermittent action. Can I see this with urge incontinence? Yes. But what if the detrusor muscle is lazy? Then you'll see decreased flow rates, kind of similar to outflow obstruction. Of course, this is an oversimplification. Real life is way more complex than this. There is more to the topic of urodynamic studies than this brief summary. To learn more about urine incontinence, vulvar cancer, cervical cancer, which can lead to outflow tract obstruction, vaginal cancer, uterine cancer, ovarian cancer, breast cancer, eclampsia, preeclampsia, gestational diabetes, and much more, download my OBGYN high yields course. And to learn about surgery and post-operative fever and post-operative urine retention and bypass incontinence, as well as trauma surgery, orthopedic surgery, and much more, download my surgery high yields course at medicosisperfectgenetics.com. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Genetics, where medicine makes perfect sense.